So endurance. That was a good one. I was very grateful and very fortunate to be selected to go on to the second expedition. But this go around, there was a lot of lessons learned from 2019, and that was all taken into account. This go around, we had a Saab AUV. Well, that's tethered back to the vessel, so we have constant communication to these things. We, know, we weren't going to let another autonomous AUV go under the ice like that. You know, it was like three or four days before the charter ended. So we, we didn't give up hope, right? But we were like, man, we only have three or four more days to try to find this thing, you know, so the pressure was on. You know, we're, we were in the little, what was the little operations uh, container, and we see this, this anomaly on the side scan. And there's some distinct features that when you see it, and there was a, it was a pretty amazing shadow going on. But we were, again, we were still kind of far away from it. So, you know, everybody had that, that look on their face. You know, it was, we were starting to get a little bit of a smirk few of the guys were there strictly to interpret, you know, to work with us, but also to uh, interpret the side scan and the multi-beam data and everything else. And everybody's kind of looking at him, just waiting for his, any type of reaction from him. And, and he just did, he had that smirk. That's it. You know, then the, the adrenaline, right? All right, we need to figure out, let's go look at this thing, all right? And sure, sure enough, we go in and start flying in. Robbie, Rob McGonagall was, was flying at the time and you know, he's slowly coming in and you see a little bit of debris here, a little bit of debris there, but nothing to confirm it yet, you know, so everybody's just getting, getting excited and sure enough, he starts keeps flying and then all of a sudden you see the wooden planks on the side of the ship to see that wood, you know, it was just unbelievable, like everybody just erupted into, into cheers, but we were, we were isolated in this uh, box, right? So no one else on the back deck can hear us. So once we he got over and he got control, we were able to do a quick visual, right? And it was unbelievable how pristine the wood was still intact. The, you know, it was so deep that the cold environment didn't allow for a lot of barnacles or marine growth, all, no pigmentation whatsoever to it, but the wood, you can still see the grain of the wood like it was floating on the, on the, you know, on the surface. But then it's when we start flying and you know, flying, 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 coming around, inspecting the whole thing, and then you just see the E, you know, the N, D, U, R, all across the stern of the vessel. That was the amazing part of it. You know, we just, we knew it. So we did our own little celebration inside of the container that we were working on, but then we didn't really, really announce it to the ship because the two guys who are, who are leaders of the expedition are out over there. So, you know, the captain started calling, hey, come back to the ship. We have something to discuss, blah, blah, blah. And they get them back. And uh, Nico, who was the subsea manager, right? He had a picture of the computer monitor, right? And when, when Minson and John got back, he, he went up to him and said, you know, gentlemen, let me introduce you to the endurance. And that's when just the whole vessel just, you know, it was finally out, you know, and just everybody was in cheers and, and excitement. I'll remember that one for the rest of my life. You know, I can play back every moment right now, just as as it happened. But cold, oh, man, it was cold. <laughs> but it was fun. It was an adventure, you know. You know, so got paid to to go on the one of the greatest adventures of my life. You know.